G'day reefers and welcome to Gallery Aquatica TV. I'm Anya and today I'm going to cover ways you can raise and maintain your pH stability. With summer fast approaching here in Australia, I cannot express enough the importance of understanding the role of pH in your aquarium, increasing the pH and maintaining the pH stability on the health of your reef inhabitants. So firstly, let's just briefly cover what is pH? pH is represented by the concentration of hydronium ions. Now, the pH scale, it goes from 0 to 14. The central point, 7, is what is considered a neutral pH. Anything under 7, acidic, and above 7, alkaline. Now, where it gets a little bit complicated is that this scale is actually non-linear. It's logarithmic. Now, what does this mean? The e each increment of pH above the next is actually tenfold more alkaline and the one below is tenfold more acidic. As an example, pH 8 is 10 times more alkaline than 7, 9 is 100 and 10 is 1000. So when people say that pH is pretty good and it's actually delving down to 7.8, it's not close to the desired figure whatsoever. It's really quite far. And even numbers like that can show some really horrible effects on your marine organisms. And they're observable. So firstly, you've got to test your pH. It's easy to test your pH. Whether or not you're using liquid test kits, a pen, or a fancy probe. Monitoring your pH level is most certainly the best place to start. It's natural in your aquarium to have a diurnal flux of pH. What this means is the pH you test first thing in the morning after your dark cycle is actually going to be at its absolute lowest point. And after the lights have been on all day, when the sun is setting, that's when your pH will be at its highest point. So step one is find out the fluctuation of pH your aquarium is encountering on a daily basis. This gives you a starting point on where to work on to maintain that stability that's just so highly desirable in your organisms. There are literally correlations which are observable between having your pH at that desired 8.25 or 8.3 and the behavior and health of your marine organisms. Examples of this include increased polyp extension on coral, um, increased accelerated growth, uh, beautiful color, um, you'll find that all your biological reactions are occurring at peak efficiency. Um, you'll have bacteria assimilate nitrogenous waste better. Your fish will actually swim like calmly. You know, when the pH is low, I can see fish are flicking. They, they swim in erratic movements. And I like to mentally believe this is to do with the water being acidic is, is literally burning their skin. So I can walk into this room and see straight away if our pH is dropping. And so the first thing I would do is test it. So once you've tested your pH and you've worked out your diurnal flux points, we're talking you've got your min pH in the morning and your max pH you've got some data to work with. So let's talk about some ways that are very easy to increase 
your pH. Firstly, raising your wave makers. This is just so simple. Because the pH increases with an increase of oxygen, simply by angling your wave makers up to the surface, you can increase the oxygen exchange at the water surface, which will help keep your pH a little bit higher. Secondly, you've got to consider why does your pH actually go down? The animals in your aquarium are on a daily basis releasing waste products and respiring. They are giving out CO2, which converts to carbonic acid, which lowers your pH within the ecosystem. So well, I'm not saying to limit the amount of animals, but what you can do is help the system remove the precursors, the organic waste physically, so that you can limit the amount that the biological load has to process for you. Mechanical componentry such as filter socks, gravel vacuums, skimmers are probably the best way to manually remove those precursors of nitrogenous waste. Everyone understands that KH is responsible for buffering your pH and the higher your KH, the less you get that diurnal fluctuation in pH. What is a little bit hard to understand is the difference between alkalinity and KH. An analogy that I like to use is to consider alkalinity as a bowl of fruit and carbonate hardness as just one piece of fruit. Other molecules that are used to buffer pH include sulfates, even phosphate. These things are not exactly desirable in the reef aquarium, so we use carbonates to help buff up that good carb the KH. There's one more parameter that I want to speak about because it's just so relevant, and that's called the pK value. Not to get too complicated with this, the pK value is a number that's determined by a bit of a complicated equation, which is actually determining the direction your pH is traveling. So, the quality of your choice of buffering system is represented by the pK value. Sodium bicarbonate is a very commonly used carbonate hardness source. However, the pK value of sodium bicarb is 7.8. And this is why, if that's all you use, your pH is destined to be traveling down to 7.8, no matter what you do. So how do you increase the pK value in this situation? You use a blend of buffers. And while there are a number of pH buffering products on the market, I'm personally incredibly familiar with the Seachem Marine Buffer. It works, it's efficient, and its pK value is actually destined to go above your point, your desired level of 8.3, with a pK value of 8.6. There's nothing to worry about with using this. It's not gonna send your pH above 8.3. The reason it shoots higher is because it needs to combat that inevitable carbonic acid release of your organisms on a daily basis within your aquarium. Five grams per 80 liters on your main display is pretty much all you need. And this is in, got borate is probably the main ingredient in this blend, which keeps it that higher buffering capacity. Reverse osmosis water that we use all the time is actually an enormous source of adding acid water to your aquarium. So one trick I have is to always make sure you actually buffer your RO reservoir with a 
quality blend of buffers as you top up and that way every time you add RO or your ATO adds the RO it's already buffered and it's going to instantly maintain that pH stability for you. A modern approach to raising your pH is to use CO2 absorbing media. This way works extremely well in spaces that are closed like offices, rooms that use a lot of air conditioning and it actually works to remove the CO2 before it enters your aquarium by putting this sodium hydroxide in a reactor and plumbing that to the intake of your protein skimmer. One brand we sell here in Australia is called Reef Pure RO and these actually have an interesting feature of changing colour when they're exhausted. So they go from white in the beginning to blue once they've uptaken the CO2 and they're saturated, indicating it's time to give them a renewal. So fish and invertebrates are not the only organisms in your aquarium which are contributing to your pH level. Coral and algae, which photosynthesize, will also increase your pH as they convert carbonic acid into oxygen. And that's why at the end of the light cycle, your main display is going to show the highest pH level possible. So why not utilize the algae in your refugium to do the work for you when the main display is asleep? This system is called the reverse light cycle and refugiums that are turning the light on of an evening as your main display lights turn off tend to create the oxygen with the photosynthesis and prevent that diurnal flux so really the difference between the min and max pH is once again much lessened. I could go on an entire new video on how to maximize your ketomorpha uptake efficiency but I will just quickly touch on a few points it's important to consider the design of the refugium and to maximize the contact time of the molecules with the cut ends of the ketomorpha, which is the actual site of the uptake. Don't just have a little rolling ball. You know, it's best not to corner off a section of your sump, but utilize an entire area dedicated to this as your removal system so that you can maximize its photosynthetic abilities. Don't forget that Ketomorpha doesn't just need N and P. There are other elements at play here to complete the reactions necessary, such as iron, manganese, even magnesium. So don't forget, it is a plant. It does need fertilizer. Reverse light cycles tend to really help reefers in need. So in conclusion, you will see an observable difference in the health and happiness of your marine organisms if you employ one or a combination of these strategies to raise and maintain your pH stability. Thank you for joining me on today's episode of Gallery Aquatica TV. I'm Anya and happy reefing. So that's our video for today. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button, hit the subscribe as well. We'll be putting out videos every week showing a, a new tank with new products. There's gonna be lots in all the videos. I'm Cam the Fish Guy and keep on reefing.